Good morning. Thank you for joining us here to the Florida Department of Health Tampa Branch Laboratory. Um, I'm pleased to have the Lieutenant Governor here, uh, State Surgeon General Scott Ritkes, our Deputy Secretary for Health, uh, Dr. Samariel Roberson, and Education Commissioner Richard Parker. And I did see some Tampa luminaries behind. We got the Mayor, we got the Senator, we got the Sheriff. So we really appreciate you uh, coming out. Last week, uh, Jeanette, uh, Scott. Um, and myself met with uh, Vice President Pence, the Surgeon General, the Assistant Surgeon General here in Florida to discuss some of the efforts for preparedness here and then to give our input on what the federal government could do to help. And the Vice President assured us that uh, we would have their full support. Um, as you know, last night the Department of Health announced that there were two presumptive positive cases of coronavirus disease in the state of Florida. Uh, the first patient is an adult resident in Manatee County without travel history to China or other countries identified for restricted travel by the CDC. The second patient is an adult resident in Hillsborough County with a recent history of travel to the affected areas in Italy. In total, 23 people have been tested in the state of Florida. The state is currently monitoring 184, um, and in total, 795 uh, have been monitored. Now, those two individuals that tested positive remain in isolation at this time. Uh, despite these cases, the overall immediate threat to the public remains low. Uh, with that said, we do anticipate that uh, more will test, test, test positive, uh, and we have taken additional actions to help contain the virus's spread. Last night, I issued an executive order establishing the Department of Health under Dr. Rizky's leadership as the agency responsible for the response and coordination of the relevant state agencies to the COVID-19 response. In the order, I also directed the Department of Health to declare a public health emergency to better equip our state with the resources needed to handle this threat. The public health emergency ensures that healthcare providers, hospitals, and labs immediately report all suspected cases to the Department of Health. It also advises individuals of the proper protective measures that need to be taken regarding the possible exposure to COVID-19. Now, individuals that have traveled to an area that the CDC has issued a warning level three or alert level two travel health notice, or those that have been in contact with someone who has traveled to those places should immediately contact the Florida Department of Health upon developing symptoms. These symptoms include fever, cough, shortness of breath, or difficulty breathing. The current countries at a level three travel health notice include China, Iran, South Korea, and Italy. Japan is at an alert level two. Um, as many of you know, there have been um, extensive restrictions regarding travel from certain parts of China. Uh, we believe that there will be uh, more restrictions in terms of Italy that the federal government um, is gonna undertake. Uh, that would obviously be helpful for us as we're looking uh, to stop the spread of the virus. Um, the public health emergency also advises individuals who believe they may have been exposed to COVID-19 to contact their local county health department prior to traveling to any physician's office, emergency department, hospital, or urgent care center. Um, if you look at this virus, the vast, vast majority of people who acquire it will not require hospitalization. Um, and so if you work through your, your local provider or county health department, rather than showing up at an urgent care center, that will help uh, with the resources uh, for, for other needs. And I've also asked Dr. Rivkeys to work with Health Secretary or ACA Secretary Mayhew to ensure that our assisted living facilities and nursing homes are taking adequate precautions, particularly those who will be um, uh, have entry to those. If you look at how this uh, virus has unfolded, folks who are middle-aged, younger, healthy, tend to weather it fine. It tends to have a del most deleterious effect on people that have either underlying health conditions or that are elderly. Um, so we believe that that's a priority and they're gonna be working uh, in conjunction with those facilities to ensure that their residents are protected. Uh, the Department of Health under Scott's leadership has been fully engaged from really the beginning of January uh, with their response and epidemiology teams uh, working on this issue. The Department of Health is now able to test for coronavirus here in Florida. Labs in Tampa, here, Jacksonville, and Miami can conduct the test. Uh, this allows test results to be available within 24 to 48 hours. Currently, CDC is taking up to five days uh, for results. Obviously, they have a lot of uh, testing that they're having to do. 
We have an incident management team in place and we're working in lockstep with the CDC, receiving multiple updates daily. Hundreds of dedicated DOH professionals are responding, including staff in Tallahassee Central Office and in each of our 67 county health departments. We've also engaged the medical community through correspondence and weekly calls and have established a, a DOH website related to COVID-19, www.floridahealth.gov backslash COVID hyphen 19. This is the best and most up-to-date source for information and guidance regarding the virus in Florida. The state of Florida is fully committed to doing everything we can uh, to respond to the COVID-19 virus. I have spoken with both Senate President Bill Galvano and Speaker Jose Oliva. Um, I'm working with Dr. Ribs, Ribkees and, and Dr. Robertson about any immediate funding that we may need. Um, and mostly we're talking about personnel. Um, and they were receptive to work with uh, my office uh, to make sure that the needs are met. Uh, so I would just tell people, you know, the risk remains low. Uh, please heed the advice of the CDC and local healthcare professionals. You hear some of the things about washing your hands and not taking, touching your mouth and your, your nose and your eyes. I mean, that really is uh, the best way to, uh, to, to, to make precautions here. Um, and I think that, uh, uh, we're working diligently to, and Scott will go into a little bit more detail, I think, on some of the things that are be doing specifically, um, but our goal is to, uh, to contain this um, and uh, make sure we're ensuring public health. So with that, I'll let the doctors come up and say a few words, and then we'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Governor. Uh, thank you all for being here. I want to begin by thanking Lieutenant Governor Lewis and Governor DeSantis for their incredible support uh, as we are facing this and also our other partner agencies. Preparing for this new virus is what public health is all about. As the governor mentioned, we have two presumed positive cases in Florida. This means that these individuals have tested positive in the state laboratories and are waiting further confirmation uh, from the CDC. Our uh, wishes and thoughts are with these individuals. The first individual is a male in his 60s from Manatee County who is hospitalized for evaluation and treatment for pneumonia. This individual is currently stable and remains hospitalized. At the present time, it is not known how this individual was exposed to COVID-19. The Florida Department of Health has been working closely with this individual, his close contacts, and health care providers to isolate and monitor any individual who may have been in contact with this virus. And we'll be implementing testing of any individual who may develop symptoms of COVID-19, which is shortness of breath, fever, or a cough. The second patient is a woman in her 20s from Hillsborough County, who recently returned from Northern Italy. Northern Italy is a site for a large outbreak of COVID-19. This individual is currently stable and remains under continued isolation with medical care at home. The Florida Department of Health is working closely with this individual for close contact health care providers to isolate and monitor individuals who may have been exposed. COVID-19 is a respiratory virus transmitted like the flu. <coughs> Symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Symptoms may occur as soon as two days after exposure or as long as 14 days. As the governor mentioned, most individuals with COVID-19 will have a mild case. 80% of individuals will be able to be treated and observed at home. Up to 50% of individuals may have a more severe case requiring hospitalization. Up to 5% of individuals, this may be especially severe. In the elderly, and those individuals with underlying medical conditions like high blood pressure, heart problems, obesity, and diabetes may be more prone to develop serious complications should they contract COVID-19. There is no vaccine to prevent COVID-19. At the present time, we do not have any medications to treat COVID-19. Thus, care is supported. Since we have two presumptive positive cases of COVID-19 in Florida, I would like to announce several measures for our residents and visitors to follow. First, regarding travel. Before planning overseas travel, please refer to the CDC website, which identifies areas 
of travel concerns. In addition to China, there are currently large outbreaks of COVID-19 taking place in Northern Italy, South Korea, uh, South Korea and Iran, with more than 1,500 cases there. If you are returning from these areas, we are asking that you self-isolate for 14 days after returning. Please refer to the Department of Health website for what this involves. This applies going forward to individuals returning from these areas and from individuals who have returned from these areas within the past 14 days. If you are self-isolating and become ill, please contact the county health department or your health care provider before seeking medical attention. We will be sure that guidance is proper protection is taken when we obtain uh, your samples. Regarding healthcare workers in medical facilities, all healthcare facilities and healthcare providers are asked to review the expanded definitions as to when to consider COVID-19 in an individual. <coughs> this includes individuals returning from areas of global high outbreak uh, within the past 14 days and lower respiratory disease symptoms. This includes individuals returning from China, South Korea, Iran, Italy, and some parts of Japan. We also are now including individuals who have new onset lower respiratory disease without a known cause as individuals who should be considered for COVID-19. Please contact your local county health departments when you're evaluating such individuals we will assist in their evaluation collection of samples. As the governor mentioned, we are now doing testing in Miami, Tampa, and Jacksonville. Healthcare providers and workers are reminded that all individuals who are being evaluated either in the outpatient or inpatient setting for lower respiratory tract illnesses should have respiratory or aerosol precautions in place. Please refer to CDC and DOH deadlines guidelines for this. We need to protect our healthcare workers from getting COVID-19. Regarding nursing homes and other residential facilities, recently an outbreak of COVID-19 was reported in a nursing home in the state of Washington. Please review your visitation policies and consider restricting visitations. Please screen all visitors for being ill and restrict anybody with any sign of illness from visiting. Universities. Colleges and universities are areas of high density interaction and housing, and many have international programs, as do some secondary schools. Please refer to CDC guideline travel restrictions. If you have students returning from high, high outbreak areas, please assist these individuals in self isolating for 14 days after their return. Commissioner Corcoran will be working and helping to get messaging out about this important issue. If any of these individuals become ill, please contact our county health departments so we can assist in their evaluation. And lastly, for the general public, as the governor mentioned, the risk to the general population is currently low. You can go about your normal business, but there are ways that you can protect yourself from COVID-19. Avoid close contact with individuals who are sick. Stay home when you are ill. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Cover your cough with, uh, or sneezes with tissues and then disposing of the tissue. And wash your hands frequently with soap and water. These are measures that will protect you. Today is an important day for all of us. We will continue to provide regular updates as this is a rapidly evolving situation. Please see the Department of Health website, which the governor referred to. The site will also direct you to the Center for Disease Control website as well. In closing, I express my thanks to Lieutenant Governor Nunes, Governor DeSantis, members of the Florida Legislature, our federal government, especially the CDC, and our fellow state agencies. I very also very much want to thank the members of the Florida Department of Health who played a tremendous role in protecting the public. Thank you.
Thank you for the opportunity here today. We have an integrated, accredited public health system in Florida, which includes 67 county health departments and three public health laboratories, and many partners that we are working with to respond to COVID-19. Please remember, if you have traveled to the affected regions that are experiencing sustained community spread of COVID-19, which includes China, South Korea, Iran, or Italy, and have symptoms of either fever, cough, or shortness of breath, or have been in contact with a confirmed COVID-19 patient within 14 days of symptom onset, or you are a person with severe respiratory illness without an alternative diagnosis, please call your county health department to help facilitate transport. This is what a person can expect if they present to a healthcare facility to be tested for COVID-19. If you meet these definitions and you are a person under investigation, that healthcare provider will take specimens, oral, nasal, and sputum, which is also saliva. They will then work with the county health department to either send or take that specimen to the public health laboratory. And then if it's negative, it stops there. And if it's presumptive positive, we are sending at the current time to CDC for confirmatory testing. Approximately the time for test results are 24 to 48 hours. And we are taking all necessary precautions at that time to isolate those individuals and prevent the spread of disease. Once individuals are identified as a person under investigation, we are then working to identify their contacts and reduce the spread of COVID-19. I just wanna reiterate, we are poised and equipped to respond to COVID-19 in Florida. 